The CO2 laser is used in the medical field for general surgery, mainly in the ENT speciality. The 10.6 micron wavelength thermal penetration ranges in microns, whereas that of other wavelengths like the NDAC or the KTP ranges in millimeters. The CO2 laser induces little in the thermal effect. These features make the CO2 laser the most useful instrument for surgery when tissue incision or vaporization without concomitant collateral damage is required. The low thermal effect is even more important with subpulsed waves which deliver power peaks of 400 to 500 watts within milliseconds. The resultant average pass power predefined during the programming usually ranges between 1 to 10 watts. We demonstrate the Hacublade, a new advanced CO2 laser system for improving microdissection. The AccuSpot micromanipulator, which is attached to the operating microscope and connected to the laser arm, yields the smallest possible beam diameter, i.e. 250 microns for a focal length of 400 millimeters. In terms of incision, there's no doubt that the AccuSpot has rendered phonomicrosurgery precise and risk-free in terms of thermal damage. But the edges of the incision appeared as slightly dented. The AccuBlade is a device that allows the beam to travel as a linear or curved line with an angular movement at the work area. Various lengths range 0.3 to 5 millimeters and penetration depths range 0.2 to 2 millimeters are programmable. A left curved line and a right curved line are available. The software calculated penetration depth is in fact based on the average absorption of the CO2 laser by living soft tissue. Depending on the desired length and penetration, the software calculates the required power and pulse duration for the single pulse mode. Both pulsed and continuous modes are available. The beam penetrates deeper in a highly hydrated tissue, such as Reinker's space, and less in a denser tissue, such as the keratotic epithelium of chronic hypertrophic laryngitis. It's appropriate, therefore, to modulate the theoretical depth of the incision according to the incised tissue, for example, a 2 mm deep incision for the epithelium and then a 1 mm incision for Reinke's space. Thanks to the AccuBlade, irregular incision lines don't occur, unlike those yielded with the micropoint. The swift beam sweep along the line reduces the operating time. Because the sweeping speed is constant, the energy distribution is uniform along the entire length of the line. The AccuBlade can either be used with an operating microscope or a handheld device. If the operating microscope is used, a joystick-controlled electrical motor can rotate the linear beam with an angular movement on the work area by guiding the flash scanner connected between the laser arm and the operating microscope. The width of the line squares with the diameter of the beam traveling along the line, i.e. 250 microns for a focal length of 400 millimeters. The curved beam is designed for the resection and dissection of lesions involving the free edge of the vocal fold, concave towards the right for the left vocal fold, and concave towards the left for the right vocal fold. The curved beam avoids injuring the vocal ligament as the operator maintains the free edge of the vocal fold taut with microforceps in order to be as far away as possible from the vocal ligament lesion. The exerted traction stretches Reinke's space and the epithelium surrounding the lesion. A straight line incision would require an exceedingly extensive resection of these adjacent tissues and would needlessly expose Reinke's space and the vocal ligament. The AccuBlade control panel is sufficiently user-friendly to allow quick intraoperative parameter modifications if required. We shall illustrate the AccuBlade application with some surgical examples. A young female singer has nodules on her vocal cords. Anesthesia is by high-frequency jet ventilation. A curved beam, concave towards the left, is used for the right side. 
The laser settings used are 1.5 beam length, 1 mm penetration, and super pulsed wave in single pulse mode with a 350 mm focal length. The recommended power software calculated was 10 watts with a pulse duration of 0.05 seconds. The dissection is carefully done away from the vocal ligament. After resection, the area is cleaned with a pledget soaked with saline solution and adrenaline at 5 degrees Celsius. As already observed with the micropoint, no thermal damage affected Ranke's space during phonomicrosurgery. On the left side, the nodule is just a thickening of the epithelium. The right concave beam is used. A shoot-by-shoot -shoot dissection gives optimum control. The vocal cords are healed, there's caudal vibration, the glottic closure is almost complete, there's still some slight inflammation on the right. This is a young woman presenting with a persistent severe dysphonia after an operation for Reinke edema. Stroboscopy allows us to observe a free edge edema corresponding to a persistent edematous polyp. The operation is undertaken with intubation.